Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's on this Tuesday, the 18th day of August. I'm Father Eric coming to you from the chapel in Charles House. And today we celebrate the life of William Porcher de Bose. Uh, he is an interesting figure who there is a St. Matthew's connection to, and I'll tell you more that when we get to reading his biography in the service. We begin morning prayer on page 42 of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the invitatory psalm, the Jubilate, beginning on page 45. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with the song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. It's going to be Psalm 37, which begins on page 633 of the prayer book. And we're going to read verses 3 through 6, and then verses 32 and 33. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks what is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not falter. The reading assigned for this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning at the 25th verse. Then he said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things, and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not, our were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? The word of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 18, a song to the Lamb, which begins on page 93 of the prayer book. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. We continue with uh, the biography of William Porcher de Bose, and I will mention at the end the St. Matthew's connection. William Porcher de Bose, probably the most original and creative thinker the American Episcopal Church has ever produced, spent most of his life as a professor at the University of the South in Suwannee, Tennessee. He was not widely traveled and not widely known until at the age of 56, he published the first of several books on theology that made him respected 
not only in his own country, but also in England and France. De Bose was born in 1836 in South Carolina into a wealthy and cultured Huguenot family. At the University of Virginia, he acquired a fluent knowledge of Greek and other languages, which helped him lay the founda foundation for a profound understanding of the New Testament. His theological studies were begun at the Episcopal Seminary in Camden, South Carolina. He was ordained in the year 1861 and became an officer and chaplain in the Confederate Army. Doctrine and life were always in close relationship for Du Bose. In a series of books, he probed the inner meaning of the Gospels, the Epistles of Paul, and the Epistle to the Hebrews. He treated life and doctrine as a dramatic dialogue, fusing the best of contemporary thought and criticism with his own strong inner faith. The result was both a personal and scriptural Catholic theology. He reflected as he acknowledged the great religious movements of the 19th century, the Tractarianism of Oxford, the liberalism of F.D. Maurice, the scholarship of the Germans, and the evangelical spirit that was so pervasive at the time. The richness and complexity of the Bose's thought are not easily captured in a few words, but the following passage written shortly before his death in 1918 is, is a characteristic sample of his theology. He wrote, God has placed forever before our eyes, not the image, but the very person of the spiritual man. We have not to ascend into heaven to bring him down, nor to descend into the abyss to bring him up. For he is with us and near us and in us. We have only to confess with our mouths that he is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead and raised us in him, and we shall live. Now the St. Matthew's connection to Du Bose is that a former rector of St. Matthew's, uh, uh, Father Jack Graves, uh, was instrumental in uh, providing the beginning of a yearly uh, lecture series. Uh, he funded the uh, money to endow uh, the scholarship, and it's called the uh, the Bose uh, lecture series and it takes place in the fall every year at the University of the South at Swami and uh, St. Matthews is recognized as the uh, the person in Father Graves and the church that uh, that initiated that lecture series and so there is a connection between our parish and uh, and the Bose and University of the South and the lecture series in his name. We continue our service by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. We say together the Lord's Prayer, followed by suffrages be. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. 
let me never be confounded. We continue with the colics. Almighty God, who did give to thy servant William Porcher de Bose special gifts of grace to understand the scriptures and to teach the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Grant, we beseech thee, that by this teaching we may know thee, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom, thy, whom thou hast sent, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which you offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your prayers and supplications. We pray for our entire church community and school. We pray for our city. We pray for all those who are sick and facing any adversity. We give thanks for the celebrations of our lives, for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, we give thanks for people who have found new work. And we remember in our prayers those who are searching for work, those who are underemployed, those who might be cut off and lonely or isolated. We give thanks for those who are reaching out to others. We pray for our country and the world give thanks for caregivers, first responders, for those who serve our military, for our political leaders, for those, all those who reach out to others that let God's love be known throughout our world. We take a moment to invite your prayers. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that we have left <clears throat> in the sanctity of our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. Amen. Conclude our service by saying together the general thanksgiving, which begins on page 58 of the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining morning prayer today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Wednesday. God bless.